It's 48 hours until exam time, and you haven't been to lecture since syllabus day. You're so lost, you don't even know where the lecture hall is. Like, is this exam on art history, chemistry, computer science, philosophy, mathematics, bioengineering? We're not really sure. What are you gonna do? Cry? Give up? Drop out and consider other career options? Hey, actually, that's not a bad idea. No! We're not quitters here. Never fear. Megan is here. I'm here to tell you that you can do it. Welcome to Megan's 48 hour survival guide. So I was taking this math class in college once and we had this upcoming exam and so how it worked at my school was that the GSIs or graduate student instructors would have to take the exam prior to the undergrads did and they did this as a way to sort of gauge the difficulty of the exam and so all of the GSIs went to go take the exam and after taking it they went to the professor and they said professor you you can't give this exam to the undergraduates this is way too difficult for them and the professor goes well I already printed out 300 copies of the exam, so it looks like they're just gonna have to take it. Huh? So exam day rolls around and I go to the hall to take the test and I sit down and the GSI comes to my table and no joke drops a Bible on my desk. Like the exam was so thick that the staple couldn't even hold all of the pages together. Oh, hell no. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE Okay, so the next few videos I'm going to be making are probably going to be about college. I realized that say 25% of my audience is not even in college yet, they're in high school, and then you know the other 25% they're like full-time scientists already. 50% of my audience is actually in college, but you know I realized the other day that I'm sort of leaving this college era or chapter of my life and you know I'm never going back, so it's either I make these videos now or I never will. And you know there's also a lot of really funny things that went down in college that I never had a chance to document because at the time this YouTube channel didn't exist yet. So I'm going to try to incorporate as many anecdotes into these videos as much as possible so that these videos are not only informative but also somewhat entertaining. This video is going to be all the things that I wish someone had told me when I was say a first semester freshman on how to exactly annihilate a college exam and also limited time too. And you know, if you're not a first semester freshman, say you're like a junior, I hope this video is also helpful for you. But you know, I know that as a first semester freshman, a majority of your focus should be dedicated to acclimating to this new academic environment and building really good study habits that will carry you through through the rest of your undergrad. These steps that I'm about to tell you are literally what I used to do and I would say worked out for me say 100% of the time. This video is for the people who have say two to three days left until their exam and you literally have no idea what's going on in this class. If you're still say a week out yet until your exam, you know, you can go chill because you still have some time. In fact, why don't you use that time to watch the other YouTube video that I made on getting straight A's in general in college and not just necessarily for a specific class. Okay, so from my experience, if you go hard for two to three days in studying, you can still pull an A. But I'm talking about 13 hours in the library, don't expect to take breaks, we're gonna have an out-of-body experience. If you want that A, you're not leaving the library until you're finished. And you know, it happens, right? Like internship interviews come up, extracurriculars pile up, can't bring yourself to care about this exam until two days before the exam day. And you know, I've been there. Like I've gotten myself into some pretty sticky situations. Like I remember there was this one class where I was so behind. I was like 26 lectures behind and I came back from the dead. Like there was this quantum mechanics class where I I had to become Schrodinger overnight. Also too, I find that if I study for an exam too far out in advance, so say like a week or two weeks in advance, I kind of forget the material by the time the actual exam day rolls around. First off, what does getting an A even mean? I feel like one of the reasons why a lot of college freshmen or even anyone in college struggle to get the grades that they want is because they haven't yet determined a barometer. They haven't yet established how far to push themselves when studying and how can I recalibrate all 
of my study skills and approaches depending on the class that I'm taking. Obviously, this is going to vary a lot depending on the university that you go to, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to assume that you're taking the most rigorous class offered at Get Wrecked University. Let's quickly go over the grading scale. Say you get like a D or an F, it basically just means try again next time. If you get within the C range, so like C minus to C plus, you're still studying like you're in high school. And then if you're B minus, it means that, you know, you're almost there to obtaining a really solid understanding of the material. B means that you actually do have a solid understanding of the material. And then B plus means that you really understand the material well, but you just may have made some silly mistakes on the exam that added up. A minus means that you just got sloppy. Like you solved all the questions correctly, but then at the end, you know, you forgot to do that unit conversion. And so minor points were taken off. And now A or A plus, which is what all of us are watching this video for. This means that you can think very deeply about the material. Like you can see the content on another level. You have been able to uplift yourself from the material and now you are seeing the course material at a certain vantage point that other people who did not get an A cannot. I had this friend in college who used to put it this way. In order to get an A in a class here, you have to lose your sanity. In order to get that A, you're gonna have to leave your comfort zone, right? You're gonna have to feel a little bit of discomfort and that's a good thing because that discomfort is growing pain. That's you becoming mentally stronger. So I had this friend in college who was the same major as me. So he was in a lot of my classes and he was actually my project partner in like every class, but he used to get an A plus on literally every exam. Like it didn't matter if you were taking computer science, chemistry, physics, bioengineering, you would get an A plus. And an A plus at our school meant that you were literally at the top of the class, right? Cause they don't just give out A pluses to everyone. And so I asked him like, bruh, like, you know, what do you want? <laughs> He would do every exam released at our school from 1990 up until the year that we were taking the class. So like around 2016 to 2020. And so essentially he would do 30 years worth of exam material twice. So if you're ever studying for an exam and you know, you think you're working hard, just remember that there's someone out there that has probably outworked you. And the grading system is gonna depend largely on the class itself too, right? So I took some classes where in order to get an A, you had to beat the person sitting next to you. So you had to get at least a standard deviation and a half above the average in order to get an A. And then there's some classes where it's not like this, right? It's just raw points. There's not a fixed number of people who can get an A in the class. And so if you just clear a certain threshold, then you would get a certain grade in the class. But I think the correct mentality to build is that it doesn't matter. Like I'm going to understand this content material at such a depth that I'm going to get an A in this class irrespective of the grading system that I'm in. And in soccer, we used to call this the zero zero mentality with the numbers being the number of goals per team. And essentially what that means is that it doesn't matter what number is on the scoreboard, we still play at the same level of intensity. And I would now like to reference my favorite quote potentially of all time, winners forget that they're in a race. They just love to run. And how this applies in the context of, you know, getting good grades in school is that you're more likely to succeed and thrive in your classes if you adopt the mentality that I want to learn this course material because I'm passionate about the subject rather than I'm driven by the motivation to study for this class simply for the grade. So now let's go over the framework, which is what are the overarching goals that we're trying to achieve when we're studying? We need to nail down two components. The first being content and the second being logistics. But by content, I mean the material of the class itself. You're really going to need to sit down and build the connections within the material yourself. If you are studying with others, then that's totally fine. But just keep in mind that when you walk in to take the actual exam, you're not going to be able to consult your friend or TA for help on a question. Okay, and the second part is logistics, which goes back to test taking strategy. You know, is the exam multiple choice? Is it free response? Are you allowed a cheat sheet? Are you allowed to count? calculator. But I think the most important logistical component would be pace. How fast do you need to work when you're taking this exam? A lot of the exams that I took in college were actually designed for the student to not finish. Sometimes the ability to finish the exam is what differentiated those who ended up getting A's from those who did not. Okay, let's get into the actual meat of this video, right? Which is the steps that I used to take. So step one is 
getting into the proper mental state. And this is twofold. Number one, don't panic. And number two, get hyped. I feel like when it comes to school, mental state is such an underrated concept. Like there's so much emphasis on the material itself and not enough emphasis on the individual who is consuming it. Mental state is the basis of learning. And if you're overly stressed and panicking, then more likely than not, you're not gonna perform optimally. You know, going back to that Yerkes Dodson law thing, you need to obtain an optimal level of arousal if you want to maximize performance. I always make it a point to obtain an inner state of calm and peace before opening any textbook. Like don't self-sabotage yourself. Cause like if you keep telling yourself I'm fucked, then you're gonna get fucked. <laughs> The mind is very fickle. Don't let it betray you. And now number two, in order to get hyped, we're gonna need some juice. And no, I don't mean celery green juice. I mean the real stuff. I mean black coffee juice. When I was studying and I, you know, had like 48 hours to become Schrodinger, I would go to FSM coffee shop on campus and I would order something called a black spider. And so a black spider is essentially black coffee with an espresso shot mixed in it. You get the best of both worlds, you know? And I didn't add any dairy, right? Because yo, our exam is in 48 hours. We don't have time for bathroom breaks. <laughs> I would sit there and I would sip on my black spider drink and I would listen to In the End by Linkin Park. Uh, let's move on to step two which is identifying the style or approach depending on the subject of the exam that you're taking. Let's quickly run through some examples. So if you're studying for a biology exam, most likely you're memorizing a lot. So this might be a good time to create flashcards. Say you're studying for a chemistry exam, you're probably going to be doing, you know, half memorizing and recognizing patterns and then the other half will be analytical. So the trick that I used to do when I was taking chemistry exams was create mental shortcuts. Because on the chemistry exams at my school, we didn't really have time to draw out the mechanisms. So, you know, you build these mental shortcuts cuts where if I see this set of nucleophiles and electrophiles, I know it's an aldol condensation. Or, you know, if I see an enolate and an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, I know right away that it maps to a Michael addition reaction. And so for engineering the physics and math classes, you're probably not going to be able to use your flashcards here because it's going to be less memorizing and more emphasis on problem solving skills and critical thinking and analytical approaches. And so what I found works best in my engineering classes is understanding the story, right? Understanding the why or significance behind each mathematical operation, right? So for example, in physics, you know, what does the eigenvalue even mean? Knowing the physical significance of the eigenvalue is that it corresponds to the energy, enables to understand the story and the context of why we're employing these mathematical operations in the first place. You know, squaring the wave function that corresponds to the physical significance of the probability of an electron being in a certain place. Why am I taking the Fourier transform here? Instead of just going through the motions and being able to take and perform the operation of a Fourier transform instead understand why am I taking it in the first place and now like you know moving on to the humanities uh, so you have a history exam coming up I took like one art history class in college uh, if your exam is essay based you know it, it would be a good idea to practice constructing an argument based on examples and building that thread of a thesis or argument steadily throughout your writing I took like one psychology class in college so I'm basically a licensed psychologist. If I recall, the answer was always Phineas Gage. You can you can be given any problem on a psychology exam. If you just write Phineas Gage, you probably got the answer correct. And step three is gather all relevant materials. Students, we're hunter gatherers. First we gotta gather and then we gotta hunt. Right now we're gathering. So what are you gonna need to find, right? So the first thing could be lecture notes or slides or textbook pages. You need to identify what range of lecture notes are going to be covered on the exam. Here's a big question. Is the exam cumulative? Is it? Uh, you need to find that out buddy, but let's hope not. What is one word that will trigger any student? Cumulative. No! You're probably gonna need to gather the homeworks and of course the corresponding solutions to those homeworks. Another thing for you to look at would be the content and the problems covered in your discussion sections or some schools call it like recitate, re recitation sessions. And the next would be past exams and quizzes. Right? And in doing this, right, in gathering all of this material before you even start studying is important, right? Because it prevents you from overlooking or missing any relevant material. Because the key is to not 
just dive into studying right away. Over the next 48 hours, your time is gonna be limited. So you wanna make sure that you're working hard in the right direction. When you rob a bank, you don't just go into the bank guns a blazing. No, instead you stand back, you survey the bank layout, you identify the entrances and the exits, you know, what is the fastest escape? Where are the security guards? You gotta know where the money's at. And I would know, right? Cause I've I've robbed a lot of banks. Uh, I'm actually filming this YouTube video in prison right now. Someone arrest me because my jokes are criminal. <laughs> what happens in these college classes is that you're going to be fire hosed with a ton of material and being able to synthesize all of this information and deconstruct it into an amount that's digestible to you is going to be very critical. Okay, so step four is to spend 10 minutes looking over a past exam. And the reason why you do this is because you need to know what to expect. Like you need to check the format of the exam. Most of the time, how my engineering classes at least, the exams were formatted were in the beginning, you had a bunch of smaller questions that basically tested whether or not you understood the basics of the material. And as you progress throughout the exam, the complexity and the difficulty would ramp up. You wanna make sure that you get those easy questions, right? Cause you wanna get as many points as you can. And so at the end, there would be a problem that my friends and I would call the KO problem or the knockout problem. And usually this is the problem that is what's gonna separate those who truly understand the material at a very deep level from the those who simply just go through the motions and are only able to solve the basic question. And the goal is to not get knocked out, right? Okay, we've finished gathering, now we're hunting. So step five is gonna be probably the meatiest part in this non-vegan buffet of studying. I have no idea what I just said. Step five, you're gonna now perform what I like to call a convolution over the material. What I mean is that when you review the material, you're gonna sweep from the first lecture to the last, and you're gonna move in discrete chunks or blocks of the material. Say your upcoming exam is lectures one to 20. First, you're going to look and review over the first five lectures. And then after reviewing those five lectures, you're now gonna go deep. So you're gonna find all of the homeworks and discussion sections that correspond to the first five lectures. So the goal here is that you're gonna see the content and then immediately you're gonna perform active learning because you're gonna see that content in the context of an actual problem. You're gonna move to the next discrete block, which is say lectures five to 10. And then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna find all of the homeworks that correspond to those lectures and do those problems. And you're gonna keep moving in discrete chunks of the material until you finish from lectures one up until lecture 20. Now here's the most important thing. While you're moving and sweeping over these lectures, you're going to pull out a sheet of paper. And on this sheet of paper, you're gonna write down two things. Number one, the classification of a problem that you've encountered throughout the homework or discussion sections. And number two, you're gonna write down anything that you're iffy about. So like if there's anything that you have that itching or nagging feeling in the back of your head that you don't really understand it, you're gonna write it down. Cause you're gonna come back to it later at the the very end, once you finish reviewing all of the content material. Ideally, at this point, I would have made a mind map, but you know, if you have like 48 hours up until the exam, you don't really need to do this. I'm gonna cover how to make a mind map in a separate video, cause some of you guys have asked me about this from the first one that I made, but I'm not gonna cover it here. Awesome, we're on step six. Now start taking practice exams. And the most important thing you're gonna do is that while you're taking these practice exams and you encounter these new problems, for each problem, try to find that problem under a classification that you may have made on that side sheet of paper that you were creating while you were going through the lecture slides. And so if you can find that problem under a classification, then that's great because you've already established the connections that you need in order to solve this type of problem. But if you find that you can't find that type of problem under a classification, then create a new classification and add that type of problem under a separate category. In addition, you're gonna continue to keep track of all the things that you're iffy about. Depending on how much time you now have up until your exam, you're gonna repeat and do this for all the exams that you have time to complete. And so what I would do is that I would work backwards from the most recent exam to my year up until the oldest exam that I can reach. Step seven is to now iron out and figure out all the stuff that you were iffy about. All the stuff that you wrote down on your side sheet of paper that you didn't fully yet understand. And to also figure out all the edge cases in the types 
types of problems that you've encountered. Because I guarantee you that the answer to that little voice in your head asking you, well, do I really need to know this? You know, is this gonna show up? That answer is gonna be yes. And now figuring out edge cases in the material. So you want to preemptively think of all the different ways that exceptions can occur. An example of an edge case that doesn't directly pertain to computer science that I can think of would be within say organic chemistry. A common question is that they'll give you a set of reactants and they'll ask you what the product is. Chemistry, there's many different ways that the reactants can interact, right? Which leads to several different products. And more often than not, one product is more stable or favorable than the other. And so in order to get the question correct, you need to determine which of the products is most favorable. Basically, every time you go to solve a problem and you immediately think of a certain way to solve it, you wanna pause and ask yourself, are you sure? Or is there another better and more efficient way of solving this problem? For every answer that you obtain in your practice exams, you want to be able to verify that the method you use to arrive at that answer is correct. Okay, so at this point, we have accomplished the first of our overarching goals, which is covering the content. And now the second part is the logistical component, which brings me to step eight. The most important is pace. In the event that you have to move very quickly, here are two things that I found really helped me accelerate the pace that I took a test. So the first is going to be using the classification that you created while you were covering the lecture slides earlier. By that meaning, when you see a type of problem, you know what to do. So you see and then you react quickly. If you are allowed a cheat sheet on the exam, I would not only write down all of the classifications that I created when studying, I would also write down all of the silly mistakes that I tended to make when studying or all of the things that I tended to forget when solving problems in practice. And now when you're taking the test because you've written it down and literally taken a note of this, then hopefully there's now a less chance that you're gonna make the same mistakes. Okay, so that's all I got. And now you just, you know, walk in and take the exam. Yay. You know, at this point, you've done everything you could. You just need to embrace the fact that no matter how hard you worked prior to the exam, you're probably going to encounter some things that you've never seen before. If you have an upcoming exam, I wish you the best of luck. You're gonna kill it. I know you will. See you later, alligator.